epidemiology. According to Globocan 2020, thyroid cancer is ninth most common cancer and responsible for 6 lakh cases worldwide. The global incidence rate in women is 10 per 1 lakh and which is threefold higher than men. Women, <coughs> 1 in every 20 cancer diagnosed with thyroid cancer. The mortality rate from the disease were much lower than global incidence rate and in women it is 0.5 and in men it's 0.3 per lakh cases. Combined that in both sexes 44,000. Lower fi figures being from the developing country and higher from the developed country. So PTC is the most common type that is 85% of thyroid cancer. It affects all age group including children with a peak incidence in third to fourth decade. Women to men ratio is 2 to 4 is to 1 and female and young patients less than 40 years of age have good prognosis. Most significant prognostic factor are age, size of tumor, and tumor stage. Mode of spread. Most common mode of spread is lymphatic, and it presents with regional lymph node metastasis in 23 to 56% of cases. Hematogenous spread is very rare, and distant metastasis is seen in 9 to 14% of cases, and it generally occurs late in the course of disease and mostly metastasized to lung followed by bone and brain. This is the flow chart to depict natural history of papillary thyroid carcinoma. 60% of PTC present as intrathyroid papillary uh, intrathyroid no nodule and 38% with regional lymph node metastasis. Out of these 98% cases, 90 to 95% cases gain long-term cure and 5 to 10% cases present as recurrent disease. 80 to 90 percent of, of cases of recurrent disease present as local recurrence in cervical lymph node or thyroid band. And 10 to 30 percent of these cases show poor prognosis. While 10 to 20 percent of these recurrent diseases distant show distant metastasis and 50 to 90 percent show a very poor prognosis. So this group is the usual presentation of papillary thyroid carcinoma. And this group is unusual presentation of PTC in which at presentation 1 to 2 percent cases present as distant metastasis with 50 to 90 percent cases will be dead of disease. Now coming to survival rates. The 10 year survival rates is maximum in PTC with 98 percent survival rate and lowest in third, uh, undifferentiated carcinoma is 13%. So parameter assessed in AMES risk group differentiation de definition system, the AMES includes age, metastasis, extent of primary cancer, and size. The criteria for higher risk PTC include male, age more than 40 years, female more than 50 years, distant metastasis, extrathyroidal papillary carcinoma, and size of tumor, more than 5 cm. The 10 year survival rates of the low risk and higher risk group are 99 and 43% respectively. So, starting with cases. This is the case one. The 31 year female present in June 2021 with left heel ulcerated lesion of long duration after burn. Biopsy turned out squamous cell carcinoma. Pre operative FGD PET CT in July 2021 showed. A FDG avid ulcero proliferative lesion in the left heel considered as primary. FDG avid in the left inguinal lymph node considered as metastatic uh, lymph node from the uh, primary. And FDG avid with SU max 19 with subcentimetric hypodense lesion in the isthmus of thyroid. So, in August 2021, FNA from the left inguinal lymph node showed metastatic squamous cell carcinoma and wild local excision of tumor was done. In September 2021, we received requisition for USG guided FNA from the FDG epit thyroid lesion. On US ultrasound evaluation, the, this is th this is trachea and this is the right lobe of thyroid and this is the lesion which is predominantly located in the isthmus. The size of lesion is 0.9 into 0.5 centimeter, which is hypoechoic to normoechoic with there is no increase in vascularity. 
So the presence of FDZ avid lesion along with hypohecoic uh, on ultrasound in a known case of squamous cell carcinoma of left heel with goinal lymph node metastasis and thyroid for the first possibility was considered clinically as metastatic squamous cell carcinoma from the primary heel. So, USG guided FNA was done from this lesion. This is the needle. So the FNA smears were highly cellular and show these large papillae with fibrovascular core along with cluster as well as singly scattered tumor cell with macrophages. This is past stain show various papillae with cluster as well as singly scattered tumor cells. These uh, papillae with fibrovascular core lined by the elongated tumor cells with oval nuclei with crowding and overlapping. This is the syncytial like clusters of tumor cells along with cellular swirls in one, one end with crowding and overlapping and moldy. This is a past stain show the cellular swelling with crowding, overlapping and multinucleated giant cells. Here we can see beautiful intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions. So in view of this morphology, it's ruling out the possibility of metastasis from the squamous cell carcinoma. So what is the diagnosis in thyroid now? So on the basis of size, less than one centimeter, the diagnosis is incidental papillary microcarcinoma. So incidence of incidental papillary microcarcinoma on autopsy material is 5 to 35% and 30% of all PTC. Due to small site, it easily missed on gross examination. So it's responsible for the false, false positive cases on FNA. USG detects tumor with a diameter of minimum 3 mm and qualify for the USG guided FNA. It has excellent prognosis with mortality rate less than 1%, loco regional relapse rate 2 to 6%, and metastasis 1 to 2%. The cases who underwent surgery without radioactive iodine treatment have an identical survival compared to general population of CME. It, it reinforces the recommendation as less invasive management an absence of oncological follow-up and keep the quality of life of the patient priority and limiting the unnecessary healthcare costs. So papillary microcarcinoma with additional factors such as extrathyroid extension, lymph node metastasis, the BRAF V600E mutation should be treated as larger PTC. So this was the case of papillary microcarcinoma. Now moving to case number two. This case number two is 23 year female, which presented in FNA OPD with a right nodule in the right lobe of thyroid gland, measuring 2 into 1.5 into 1 centimeter, with right cervical level 3 lymph node, measuring 2 into 2 centimeter. FNA smear from the thyroid gland were highly cellular and show these large papilla with, with fibrovascular core cluster as well as singly scattered tumor cells. And this is panel of uh, micro photographs show these beautiful large papilla with fibrovascular core. And this is a high power to show these papilla along with cluster as well as single scattered tumor cells. And here we can see the intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusion with crowding overlapping. Here we can see in HNE stain the intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusion with nuclear grooves and fine chromatin. So here we, in this panel of microphotograph, we can see this prominent intranuclear grooves. Here we can see that with enlarged nuclei and crowding, crowding of tumor cells with intranuclear pseudo inclusions. And here we can see beautiful semometus calcification. And along with bubblegum colloid, along with tumor cells with multinucleated giant cells, with hobnail cells and metaplastic cells. On cell block, these cells are beautiful papillae lined by the tumor cells with characteristic nuclear feature. So now the FNA done from the right cervical lymph node yielded dark brown fluidy material and smear of which were moderately cellular and show the cystic macrophages cluster of tumor cells this high power to show this cluster of tumor cells with showing crowding and overlapping along with this pigment and foamy 
pigment laden and foamy macrophages along with lymphocytes in the background so diagnosis in the thyroid lobe is papillary thyroid carcinoma and in lymph node a cystic metastatic ptc so at presentation with uh, ptc with lymph node metastasis is seen in 23 to 56% of cases which is higher in follicle higher than follicular carcinoma which is 5 to 13% lymph node metastasis as sole initial manifestation as occult primary tumor seen up to 20% of cases and in thyroid gland the tumor almost always found in the ipsilateral side of lymph node metastasis cystic lymph node metastasis seen in approximately 40% of all lymph node metastasis thus it may mimic an apparently benign cervical cyst or branchial cyst clinically and histologically increase lymph node metastasis risk seen in the younger age male sex large tumor size extra thyroid extension and multifocality so now moving to the case number 3 which is 69 female and this patient is known case of ptc thyroid gland and with right cervical level 1b lymph node metastasis in october 2018 in december 2018 it presented with right level 4 lymph node metastasis in after one year in july 2019 it present with axillary lymph node with 22 cm dia and fna was done and fna smears were highly cellular and show this cluster of tumor cells along with this many intra nuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions along with crowding and overlapping so the feature are consistent with the metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma but here one thing to it's important to note that this axillary lymph nodes uh, represent the distant metastasis so now coming to the case 4 so this is a 8 year male pediatric case group presented with cough and dyspnea on chest x ray there are there were miliary opacities and specimen received in lab is bronchial alveolar lavage fluid and the spheres were moderately cellular and show cluster of these tumor cells the tumor cell arranged in three dimensional cluster follicles and acid these cells are mild, mildly pleomorphic round nuclei scant to moderate amount of cytoplasm this is lbc uh, pap steam smear which show three dimensional cluster of tumor cells with pigment laden macrophages polymorph and alveolar macrophage in respiratory epithelial cells this is the high power to show nuclear morphology in which we can see these grooves here we can see grooves and pale powdery chromatin round nuclei round nuclei <coughs> so on the cell block these cells are arranged in uh, follicle and, and follicles and uh, acini with central uh, secretions along with scattered alveolar macrophages on physical examination of patient a thyroid swelling is was identified measuring 3 into 2 cm and fna smears from uh, thyroid were highly cellular and show these true papilla with fibrovascular core along with singly scattered tumor cells and we can see these intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions with uh, with uh, micro follicles with overlapping and crowding here we can see one papilla with cap blood capillaries and there is a large nuclei with crowding overlapping with intranuclear grooves and pale powdery chromatin so in thyroid it diagnosed ptc and bile is metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma so few uh, points about distinctive distinctive features of the thyroid cancer in children ptc is a most common histology histologic type in children and it it is multifocal within the thyroid gland the biological more aggressive and compared with that in adult with more frequent extra thyroidal extension and higher incidence of lymph node metastasis or distant metastasis 60 to 80% of cases have lymph node metastasis risk of recurrence of high irrespective of the initial extent of surgery lung metastasis occur in approximately 10% of cases recurrence risk is 10% to 35% excellent prognosis seen in childhood ptc 
with overall survival of 98 to 99 percent with mortality rate of 2.6 percent. Now coming to case number five. This is a 75 year male and diagnosed as papillary thyroid carcinoma and, and underwent total thyroidectomy in 2007. After 10 years, the patient presented with breathlessness with pleural effusion and specimen received is, was pleural fluid with possibility of metastasis, query primary lung and query thyroid. So the pleural fluid smear are moderately cellular and show cluster as well as singly scattered tumor cells along with these polymorph lymphocytes and mesothelial cells. In this panel of microphotograph, we can see the tumor cells arranged in these clusters and singly scattered with moderate pleomorphism, abundant cytoplasm with uh, in LVC. Pap stain, we can see this is opened up chromatin with prominent nucleoli, and we can see this prominent mitotic figures. Here we can see the abundant peculated cytoplasm, but there is no intranuclear uh, cytoplasmic pseudo inclusion or grooves. So, the possibility of metastatic adenocarcinoma from lung primary was considered on higher, car on, higher on cards in comparison to papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, the cell block was processed and it showed this cluster of tumor cell with few papilleroid clusters and these have hyperchromatic nuclei and ISC was performed for the lung and these cells were positive for CK7, also positive for CK20, our negative for WT1 and napsin A. TTFN was not done as it is positive in both thyroid and lung. <coughs> Sorry. And possibility of metastatic adenocarcinoma from the lung primary was ruled out. So we proceed with the possibility of uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma. And these tumor cells were positive for CK19, nuclear positivity for PEX8, and cytoplasmic positivity for thyroglobulin nucleocytoplasmic for galactin and membranous positivity for the HPME1. So the pleural fluid reported as metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma. So few words about ISC in the thyroid. PTC cells are immunoreactive for thyroglobulin, TT1, paxate and cytokeratin. Many ISCs are there to differentiate malignant versus benign thyroid lesions. The most commonly used are high molecular weight cytokeratin 34 beta E12, cytokeratin 1, CK19, galactin 3, HBAB, HBME1, and so on. And these are more commonly expressed in malignant cells. Focal or extensive staining of these markers may be seen in normal thyroid follicles, non neoplastic thyroid lesion, in particular thyroiditis and benign thyroid tumor. For example, CK19 and galactin-3 are positive in 31 and 55% of adenomatous hyperplasia, respectively. Even the application of a panel of antibodies like CK19, galactin-3 and HBME1 result only in marginal improvement in the performance. So, ISC should be interpreted in conjunction with the microscopic features. So, now few words about lung metastasis. The distant metastasis usually involve the lung, which is more common than bone, and bone is more common than brain metastasis. The distant metastasis usually occur after the initial treatment of the thyroid cancer. Among all distant metastasis, 67% are lung and 25% are bone. In PTC, metastatic pleural effusion as initial manifestation is extremely rare. In retrospective report from the MD Anderson Cancer Center, 10 patients, that is 0.6%, had malignant pleural effusion that developed during the course of PTC among 1,772 patients. Malignant pleural effusion lead to dismal prognosis with reported median survival of 11 months. So now coming to case 6, it's a 55 year female in July 2021, she presented with pathological fracture of humerus with trivial trauma. Open reduction and interfixation done and biopsy taken from the fracture site by orthopedician. This were the biopsy 
from the department of histopathology this show the multiple cores of a tumor in which the tumor cells are tumor arranged in papilla in follicles and sheets these papilla are lined by tumor cell with hyperchromatic nuclei as we can see these tumor cells hyperchromatic you know, mild pleomorphism and with thyroid follicles like structures with colloid like material so isc for ttf1 and uh, and thyroglobulin were performed and tumor cell were diffusely positive for ttf1 and thyroglobulin so diagnosis of metastatic ptc in humerus form was given and in september 2021 after two months patient landed in fna opd with thyroid gland swelling size 5 into 4 into 2 cm with right cervical level 4 lymph node not 2.7 to 2 cm the fna smears were highly cellular and show this cluster of tumor cells with arranged in this papillary pattern with fibrovascular core cluster as well as singly scattered this higher high power to show this papilla with fibrovascular core and singly scattered tumor cells this is hne to show these beautiful papillae with fibrovascular cores and this micro follicles with crowding overlapping and fine chromatin so cell block showed this nice papilla with tumor cells fna from the lymph node show similar morphology and this is reported as bone humerus metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma thyroid gland papillary thyroid carcinoma and in lymph node it's metastasis so few words about osseous or bone metastasis hematogenous distance metastasis to bone are extremely rare osseous metastasis are observed in all thyroid carcinoma ranges 2 to 15% in ptc is 1.4 to 7% in follicular carcinoma it is 7 to 28% of cases and medullary carcinoma 16 to 19% so osseous metastasis are more common in follicular and medullary carcinoma at the time of diagnosis bony metastasis are present in less than 2% of all patient more than 80% of metastasis is located in axial skeleton red marrow where blood flow is highest most common site of metastasis are vertebrae pelvis ribs and femur osseous metastasis are common in male patient age more than 65 year of age than the those which age less than 50 year of age bony metastasis are broadly defined as lytic which is more common sclerotic or mixed osteolysis is triggered principally by tumor stimulated osteoclast differentiation and activation rather than by the placement of bone by tumor this tumor cell release inhibit release of osteoblast inhibitory factor which inhibit the osteoblast and release of osteoclast inducing factor which convert the osteoblast into osteoclast with the help of rank ligand and these osteoclast lead to lead bone resorption and this bone resorption really uh, promote the release of pro proliferative factor which promote the growth of tumor cells so this vicious cycle sets in and lead to poor prognosis the asymptomatic metastasis seen in 60% of cases of bony metastasis and pathological fracture seen in about 13% of patient among tumors that metastasize to bone thyroid cancer are the third most common however osteomesis osteo uh, osseous metastasis was associated with poor prognosis and lung metastasis 70% historically cases died within 4 year of discovery by 5 year and 10 year of overall survivability is 61% and 27% respectively now coming to treatment of papillary thyroid carcinoma in pgi we follow these 2015 american thyroid association management guidelines according to which thyroid nodule less than 1 cm no extra thyroid extension and no lymph node metastasis minimal invasive surgery done which is lobectomy 1 to 4 cm no extra thyroid extension no lymph node metastasis total thyroidectomy done and more than 4 tumor size more than 4 cm with extra thyroid extension or lymph node metastasis and distant metastasis that therapy treatment options are total thyroidectomy lymph node dissection radioactive iodine therapy tss suppressive hormone therapy in distant metastasis cases the aim of treatment is to reduce the burden of tumor 
which may offer a survival or palliative benefit. The preferred hierarchy of treatment is surgical excision of local regional disease, which, put, which is potentially curable, radioactive iodine therapy, external beam radiotherapy or thermal ablation, and TSH suppressive regiotherexin hormone therapy, systemic therapy with FDA-approved kinase inhibitor, especially for the progressive microscopic refractory diseases. Now, treatment for the pulmonary metastasis. There are three types of pulmonary metastasis, pulmonary micrometastasis, macronodular pulmonary metastasis, and solitary pulmonary metastasis. In pulmonary micrometastasis, these metastases are less than 2 millimeters of size, and in this, we give REI therapy. And it should be repeated every 6 to 12 months as long as disease continues to concentrate radioactive iodine and respond clinically because the highest rate of complete remission are reported in the subgroup. The micronodular pulmonary metastasis, if they are iodine heaven, then REI therapy is given. While solitary pulmonary metastasis may be considered for the surgical resection. In bony metastasis, which are radioactive iodine avid, avid, the REI therapy is given. It improves survival, but it's really curative. Bone metastasis visible on anatomical imaging should be treated with surgery or EBRD. So the take-home message from this talk is that cytology is the mainstay of assessment of thyroid pathology and diagnosis of malignancy. Thus have important role in deciding the management. Incidental intrathyroid papillary microcarcinoma should be treated with fever fewer intervention and less invasive management. Quality of life of the patient should be the priority of treatment. Cystic lymph node metastasis, especially in younger patients, might appear as purely cystic masses, mimic, mimicking benign or, brain, uh, benign or brachial cleft cyst. Pulmonary metastasis is rare and which can be diagnosed by bal or pleural effusion cytology. Despite such an advanced case, adequate treatment still confer and good prognosis. Osseous metastasis is extremely uncommon finding and convey worse prognosis, high morbidity, and therapeutic challenge. Thank you very much for patience listening. These are the references. Here is ends my.